Hey everybody, Rust Quick Electric here again with you today to present what I would consider to be one of the more fun builds along with the new updates to the electricity system within Rust. What we have here today is going to be a heartbeat base alarm and I'm going to showcase how to create it quickly. It would, ended up being a lot easier than expected and I'm going to use the siren light but you could use the actual alarm or any other triggerable object that you want such as a door to an auto turret or shotgun trap or just shutting your base doors but I'm going to give you the tools today in order to create this loop for each wall of your base because it can be repeated and set up an own independent trigger for each output now with this build we're going to need a electrical branch timer counter the new heartbeat sensor a splitter the blocker, and the siren light, or whatever you'd prefer to be your triggerable item. Now, we're going to build it on this wall, and as with the most recent videos, I've begun using the generators, but you should know that it needs to be replaced whatever you're using in vanilla. Generators are just for sake of convenience, and it helps make the build easier. So we're going to start here with our heartbeat sensor on the external facing wall. Now these are required to have line of sight and you'll see that it has a power in, power out and it will be configurable to tool cupboard accepted or not so that it can ignore people that are allowed to be in the area. Now we have this one on an outward facing wall and if you were to do it on each exterior of your base, say this wall and the other wall as well, you would come to realize that you need a separate build for each one, as I link in the schematic. So you'll have to set up that exact circuit for each wall and have an independent detector. Now going onwards with the build, we're going to set up a splitter, just for convenience. We're going to have our counter, which is the real crux of the build, since we're using the increment on it. We're going to have both our electrical branch and our blocker. Now, you might wonder why you might need these since you could just use the regular increment up of the counter to toggle. But what I want is a small window in which any other heartbeats that are detected for a separate input pass through and toggle the increment counter up, but then reset after a short amount of time. There was a similar thing that I did with the ghetto heartbeat detector using the laser detector but this is with the real deal now and it is much cleaner and a simple build the other things that we're going to need is a timer and our siren light so we're going to set up the timer we'll just go ahead and set it right here and we'll have the siren light as our triggerable object now as far as wiring goes with any build we need power we're going to have our splitter connect, and you will need a separate power source for the counter since this is three inputs that already need it. So we're just going to go ahead and run a wire across here to come to our counter. Next up, we need to wire some power in to our heartbeat detector. So we're going to go ahead and wire through the wall here just so the wire is not running crazy. Power in, and then the power out, and you'll hear that little trigger noise showing that it's currently online along with the red dot. We're going to have the power out of our heartbeat sensor going towards the increment counter of our counter. So we'll bring it here just so that we can see the actual wired connection. Next up, we need to power a couple other things. We're going to need to power our timer, which we can run down and across. And then we're going to need to power our locker. So we're going to go ahead and power this. Right there. Now the timer is going to be our actual output for the branch and our trigger device. So we're going to wire this up across here and we'll go on this side just so it's a little neater. Into the power in for the branch. Branch out is going to go towards the siren power in and the configurable amount can be whatever you need for whatever your trigger is. For this instance, it doesn't much matter since we're using our generators, but if you needed to configure that, you simply press E, set the amount, and set it. The other of our branch is going to go to the block pass-through function of our blocker. So our timer to a branch, branching out to our triggerable object, as well as the block pass-through, which 100% has to be wired since this is critical to our reset function. Now, the power out of the uh, blocker is going to come down here, 
we'll bring it across a little bit. Down and out to our clear counter. This is important. Since it's required for our timed interval, the timer is going to have a set amount of time. It's going to block the pass through the counter and then clear it after that set amount of time. If we had just done it from a branch from the timer, it would reset immediately and no longer log the current amount of players. It would be minus one and it would not reset the counter at the end of the timer duration. So the last thing that we need to wire is a pass through for our counter, which that's simply going to come up and around over to our timer toggle on. Now the only thing that's left to do is set the configurable amount of time for our timer and to set the pass through amount for our counter. Now since we want it to toggle the instant it senses someone that shouldn't be there, it's going to be a pass through value of 1 on our counter, no matter what, unless you set up some wonky thing that you want where it suddenly begins the trigger at 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever you want. But for this instance we're using 1 for our detector. The next thing that needs to be toggled is the timer. But this needs to be toggled once it's been activated, so we'll just go ahead and activate it. And as you see, it blocks the pass-through, and it will reset immediately following that point when the pass-through is loud further. The siren light will stop, and it will pass through one toggle to reset this counter. So now that this has been done, we can set the timer. We're going to set it to a 5-second window to detect players. And now let's see how it works. We come within range of the detector, the alarm goes off, the counter goes up, the timer begins its 5 second interval, and then it resets our counter. Now let's see it as if multiple people had passed, or leave and re-enter. 1, 2, well, a little slow there, here. 1 detected, another in. But because I'm the same heartbeat, it's not re-detecting me. So we'll see if we can get this to trigger multiple times. There's a second. And you'll see that two were detected that time. The player needs to completely leave the range of vision or line of sight of the heartbeat sensor in order for it to retoggle as a separate entity. So we'll show it one more time, or at least try to. There's one toggle and a second toggle, which shows you two before it resets. That little clicky noise you hear is actually the sensor. So the people that are getting triggered by this device will know that they've been detected. The siren itself, the siren light, is important because it doesn't make noise. If you use a noise-making thing, it kind of ruins it if they do not hear this noise or they're not aware of what the noise is to begin with. If you're going to wire a trap to this heartbeat sensor, the exit point for your trap is once again this branch out. So anything that you want to have triggered when the heartbeat sensor is tripped would go towards this branch out or the actual power out if you need more power. You can do either or and set it with the configurable branch. That's all I have for you today. As I stated at the beginning of the video, you would just recreate this for every wall that you plan to have a heartbeat sensor if you want to have it completely surrounding your base. I appreciate everyone's support as we pass 250 subscribers and I thank you all for joining the Discord and having great communication and talks. Thank you.